is to, um, if you want to get metaphysically, spiritually, culturally, to call in the spirits for the evening. So that is what we're about to do. You guys ready? You guys ready? Yay! Awesome. Collective, so we do appreciate them, and as well as a few other people here sponsoring this event tonight. Uh, who we are, we are a neo-traditional line dance team that started in 2019. Um, we also have about 15 years of experience on our team uh, within certain individuals, and we perform this ancient tradition and art throughout Louisville, Kentucky. So, River Lotus, go ahead and say hi to the Lake Cumber or the Somerset community. Somerset community, say hi. Hi. So, from our team, we do want to wish you guys a happy lunar year in 2024. And if you guys didn't know already, this year is actually the year of the dragon, which is actually one of the most popular years in throughout East Asia. So, an overview of today's celebration is that we're going to go ahead and talk about what is Lunar New Year, right? Because some people in the audience might not know, and uh, today we're going to answer those questions. And then we're going to do an impromptu Legend of Lion Dance here. Um, we're going to go and do a demonstration of the legend of why Lion Dance and Lunar New Year so, um, have such a tight relationship. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about the culture as well as the history. And finally, ending the night with the line dance performance. So that's what we'll be doing here tonight. And we're going to jump right in. So what is the Lunar New Year? Does anybody, by show of hands, who celebrates Lunar New Year? Who's celebrated before? Anybody? Anybody? OK, I see a couple hands. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's give a round of applause to them. Yes. Yes. Very cool. So what is the Lunar New Year? It is a 3,500 year old tradition that has been celebrated throughout East Asia for many, many years. And it marks a spiritual cultural renewal similar to the um, Western New Year. And it celebrates the coming of spring and the end of winter. I think a lot of people are very excited about that. So a little bit more about what is the Lunar New Year. It is actually, uh, contrary to the Western uh, calendar, or the Western modern calendar, so to say, um, it's based on the position of the sun. So that is the modern calendar, or the Gregorian calendar. And then we also have the lunar calendar, which is based on the position of the moon, which is why the celebration of Lunar New Year will actually shift from early January to late March. And why do people celebrate the Lunar New Year? Well, it's similar to the Solar New Year. Solar Lunar or New Year. Yeah. 
It's because it's a time for people to come back together, to refocus, to reanalyze and look deep within themselves, to reflect on their characters and their values and their virtues as well. And it's a time to let go of their old habits and start new ones. So it's actually very similar. So if we break this down just a little bit here, is how do people celebrate? Oh no, John will take care of that. Thank you, John. Everybody say thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. So how do people celebrate? Firstly, they clean, clear, and condition the home similar to spring clean. Secondly, decorating the home in bright red and gold colors. And giving and receiving lucky envelopes to younger children or to friends and family and loved ones, and actually to the lion. Tonight, if you hand out to lucky envelopes to the lion, uh, it's believe that you'll have good luck for the new year. And visitations to their ancestors. Pay respects, whether that's church or to grave sites or who, those people who've departed from this world. And gathering with family to share a special meal, similar to what we're doing here tonight, which leads to this last slide. How else do people celebrate? Does anybody have an idea? I'll take a, take a person. Anybody? No? All right, I'll give you guys a big hint. What, we got a hand? Okay, awesome. What's, What's your name? Sticks. Okay, Sticks, how else do people celebrate? Going to shrines to give offerings. Oh yeah, give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause for that. Woo! Thank you, Sticks. How else do people celebrate? Well, exactly what we're doing here tonight. Celebrating with the community. Yeah, woo! So what are we doing here today, right? What, what is our team doing here from Louisville, Kentucky, here in Somerset? Well, we're actually here to perform a sacred art and tradition called Lion Dance. And Lion Dance and the Lunar New Year have a very close relationship because Lion Dance is one of the most popular activities during the Lunar New Year, and it integrated itself into the tradition over 2,000 years ago. So we're gonna go ahead and tell you guys a story, okay? So for those who have children, I want to preface, it is a little scary, so just be mindful of that. But we will go ahead and get started, so let's give a round of applause to these guys as they get started, okay? Woo! Here's the story of the legend of Lion Dance. mountainous village, deep in the heart of Asia, there lived a people who lived in terror. Each year on the 12th full moon, a creature of primordial malevolence would descend from the peaks of a mysterious eastern mountain, causing mayhem and decimation to everything in its path. Devouring playful children, destroying bountiful harvest, and leaving beautiful homes in ruin. No one knows from which this beast came. Perhaps from a falling star or some faraway land. Each and every year, this beast would return without fail. With intensely glowing eyes, 
fangs as sharp as a thousand knives in a body clad of black shimmering scales. This beast was known as the Nier. Everything changed when a wise traveler passing through the village heard the people lived in fear and anguish from the great Nian. He decided he would help. Since he had traveled far and wide, he had wisdom and knowledge obtained from years of experience. A solution from a far away, distant land. In one year's time, he returned from the western lands, a far away land, far over the mountains. He brought along with him a beast called the Shur. and noble bravery. Its muscles were strong and its limbs stout. It possessed the strength of ten men and the ferocity of a vivacious hurricane. Its hide was thick like the scales of a dragon. And its eyes wildly focused and its presence unwavering. As night fell and revealed the twelfth full moon, a great battle was ensued. With the help from the whole village, banging drums, pots, and pans, and using bright colors, the powerful Shur and the great Yan were destined to clash like great titans of the sky.
the Injunian was no match and fled deep into the darkest sea. Each year, if you gather with like-minded people, be loud, be joyful, and be cheerful. Summon the mythical sure. You will scare away the Nian and have great luck for the new year. The wise man left with the mythical lion, and many years later, lion dance is practiced all over East Asia every year. enjoyed that. Each year we perform the lion dance to not only uh, provide this idea of the power and protection of what the lion symbolizes, but we also like to create this environment of magic and wonder and to encourage personal growth and well-being for the new year. Lion dance and the Lunar New Year are a great way to celebrate self-improvement for the coming year. And it's celebrated with bright colors, fireworks, lion dance, and finally, the community. So thank you guys. Woo! So does, while we're here on this page, on this slide, does anybody have any general questions while I can answer um, while I have the floor? Any questions? I see this young man. Young man, what's your question? What's your question? What's your name? Isaac, and I like this show a lot, and I give it 1,000 thumbs up. 1,000 thumbs up? <laughs> awesome! High five! Woo! <laughs> what's your name? Cameron Adams. Okay, Cameron. What do you think? What do you got? Any questions for me? Um, uh... The dragon is a carnivore and can attack any people if they're not careful. Hey, that's some, that's some wise that's some wise wisdom there. I, you know, I'd be scared myself if I've seen a, a very giant creature, a very giant um, creature with a lot of teeth. I'd be scared myself. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the history of lion dance, right? Because you you guys might have some questions of like, why what? Dragon, lion, thing? So I'm gonna answer those questions for you here today. So firstly, the lion actually came from the Silk Road, right? The Silk Road transmission uh, from parts of Afghanistan, and it was transmission here through Buddhism. So the stories of the legendary and mythical creature known as the Shur was passed along the Silk Road in the Han Dynasty, which was about 200 BCE, before the Common Era. And the root word of Shur is actually Ser in Persian, which means lion. And Persia is in modern day Afghanistan, which is actually the Corinthian Empire, which used to exist in that time frame. So we can say that everywhere these three philosophical thoughts have spread, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, uh, lion dance was actually imported as a cultural tradition, tradition, what you'll see throughout this PowerPoint. And we can understand that from the origins of lion dance, from the White Horse Temple, which was established in 68 Common Era, so Common Era, which is located in modern Luoyang, Henan province. And if you can see here, uh, Chang, Chang'an, which is right here in Xi'an, is actually one of the ancient capitals of ancient China, as well as Luoyang, which is where White Horse Temple is located. And uh, for a, you know, I guess 2,000 year old temple, it's got 4.6 stars, yeah, 65 reviews, I guess not so bad after a couple thousand years. <laughs> So the legendary beast, what's that that sits in front of the temple? Do we have, anybody? 
A lion, exactly. Yes, yes. It's a lion. So a little bit about the symbolism of lion is that they were actually called foo dogs, right, for a while, which means a blessing dog or a, a, a good, um, there's a couple other things that are tied to that, but for simplicity, I'll say that it symbolizes power, protection, and authority. And it was found outside of emperor's tombs or outside of palaces and actually sacred places. And the spread and evolution of this idea and this tradition of lion dance spread throughout East Asia. So you have all these different kinds of species. So the lion that you actually see today is one of the southern lions, which I'll break down here for you right now. Oh, and a fun fact for people who don't know already, uh, lions are not native to East Asia. So you can understand that back then there's no Google, right? So you can't Google a lion. So that's why we have so many lion dance species uh, throughout East Asia. And the first northern lion is this one. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. It's, it's actually this one over here to the right. So the first lion that was introduced to Asia is actually based on this understanding of the Pekingese dog. Right, so they didn't have a reference. They hey, said, hey, this looks like it, so we'll go ahead and make this costume. And now, this one, the Southern Lion Dance of China, which is actually the one that you just saw, is based on the dragon. And fun fact, I think everybody knows tonight is the year of the dragon as well. And you can tell that it is based on the dragon because it has scales, wild eyes, whiskers, a horn. So they kind of mix these ideas of a dragon and a lion together to create this beast. And another fun fact, I guess we, we're having a lot of fun tonight, so there's a lot of those. The southern lion dance species is actually the most popular species throughout the world. We also have Gang Sengi, which is from Tibet in northern India, and they're all white, or snow lions. We have Barong Sai. You, you guys might like this one. Uh, Barong actually means bear, and uh, Sai is similar to the word shur when it was introduced, and sometimes it's led by a monkey. And in this tradition, instead of a Nian, we have this this uh, witch, this evil witch. Hey, yeah, it's an evil witch. We have an evil witch. But uh, to kind of, you know, get that picture out of your guys' head, uh, here's, here's this one again. <laughs> so we also have Senye, which is from Korea. Uh, it's, it was introduced in the Sia Kingdom around 57 BCE, so right around that same time that uh, those ideas were imported. And this art form, there's two main art forms. There's one that is based on exorcism or um, kind of like shamanistic kind of drama, right? And that's this one here. And there is this one, which is made more based on recreational purposes, more for just fun community, kind of like what we did here today. And in both forms, uh, the lion is still considered a hero as well. And I will talk about one more final lion dance species, and that is the Shishimai from Japan. So these lion heads actually have a wooden head. So when they clap together, they make a loud clap sound. And also, if it bites your head, uh, it's supposed to be good luck. So uh, any brave souls out there? <laughs> It arrived to Japan in around the 8th century, and it's believed that there are over 9,000 variations of this kind of lion dance in Japan. So that's a, that's a lot more species that I, I probably won't go over with you guys tonight. <laughs> and finally, lion dance today is celebrated all over the world and it's a culture that is 2,000 years old, and we really appreciate you guys listening to that today. Thank you. Wow. Woo! Thank you. And we will go over the cultural mentality as well as one more final performance for you guys. Why do people do the line dance? 
We're going to get into that a little bit more. There is a cultural mentality to line dance. And this is the approach, right? Why perform in a costume? Hey, why, why, are we, why, are, why perform in a costume? Line costume. We perform in a line costume because the symbolism of a lion is to scare away the evil spirit. How can we scare away the evil spirit in our human form? That's a good metaphysical answer. I give you that. I'll talk to you a little bit later. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Hey, give him a round of applause, guys. So why we actually perform the line dance is actually because it's associated exactly what he said, kind of symbolism, and in our internal selves. And that's this idea of strength, powerful, power, and gracefulness, as you've seen in the line here just a moment ago. And it was culturally integrated into martial arts. So martial arts in the line tradition. So East Asia has a lot of emphasis on philosophy, health, and as well as martial arts, and line dance began to be adopted by martial arts schools with their strength and their display of skills. They used it kind of like a mascot, kind of like chili. And Kung Fu actually means prolonged time spent training hard. And line dance, in a way, is an active expression of strength training in martial arts. So we have Danny here, we also have Kevin. Danny, Kevin, if you guys can stand up here in the front and center. Actually, Danny, we got you too, so if you can stand up here, three, three of you guys. Yep. All right, for you guys, can you guys demonstrate a horse stance, please? All right, so these are the fundamental movements of line dance. Horse stance and crane stance. Okay, drop stance. Okay, horse stance again. All right. You guys want to see how long they can hold that for? <laughs> All right, let's end it with a jump and front kick. Nice. Give them a round of applause, guys. So that's some of the footwork behind line dance, right? It's a form, it became a form of exercise, right? Training and representation of the martial arts school skills to the community. Uh, physical prowess, as you just saw the stance, and the level of body positioning and head movements is kind of secretly tied in there, right? When I'm in the tail like this, I'm ready to wrestle somebody. I'm ready to take, take them down and go down with them off oh, my back. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave that to these young guys here. And it's a way to develop some speed, power, agility. It, it allows you to work together, to synchronize your movements, to jump up. Okay, I'm going to jump up. I'm going to do this with you. We're going to team up together. We're going to listen to the music and build up situational awareness. This is all built into the martial arts aspect of line dance. And finally, the face puzzles or challenges and whatnot as well. We are going to go ahead and finish this night off with a line dance performance for you guys, okay? So we do hope you enjoy.
for the upcoming uh, diversity collective. We want to thank you guys for coming out again today. If you guys want to come up and take some photos with the Lions, please feel free. But that's it for our session today. Thank you guys. Happy New Year! Woo!